that I have always wanted to build and I finally built it and it was very easy to do. It has proved to be very helpful in documenting my work and making the projects work. Um, and this is something that would be very, very helpful to have in a makerspace or a classroom. One of the things we need to think about is helping students document their work. And so um, what I thought I would do is kind of walk you through the process. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, with some pictures so you can kind of see how it's done. So I'm using, for mine, this is three quarter inch PVC, um, and I do have up here some one inch PVC um, that I'll explain here in a little bit. And this is completely adaptable to whatever it is that you want to do. So for me, one of my struggles was I wanted it to fit on these tables that I had built um, for my work area. And so I took measurements and I decided to um, make this project this is 22 inches wide and then 24 inches um, long you can adjust this accordingly based on the size of your tables and the size of your space and then I have this sitting up at 25 inches tall total and so what I've done is I've gone through and what you're going to need is um, for these three quarter inch 90 degree pieces, you're gonna need six of them for the four corners at the bottom. So you can see there, and then you're gonna need two up top for the top frame. You're also then going to need right here, six three quarter inch T PVC pieces. Um, these here to build the support across the bottom here. So there's one, two, and then two down here to build the, the stand up then another two to build your cross beam across there accordingly. You're then the last thing you're going to need is you're going to need five one inch PVCs. Now this number is, uh, is flexible. If you're only going to build one of these, um, then you might just need um, two, maybe three on what you decide to build. These are where I mount my cameras and I'll put the links of what I've purchased in the show notes so you can access that. So just depending on what you're gonna do, I'm actually gonna be adding a third one here. So I'm gonna need to buy some more PVC, but these are one inch T brackets. And then you can see this one has um, a, fight, a fitting down to a three quarter inch PVC. And then this one here stayed at one inch um, for the strength. So it just kind of depends on how you want to build things out. And we'll talk about those here in just a little bit. So your first thing that you need to do is make your cuts. And so if I know that I want to be 22 inches across, because my table is 24 inches and I, I wanted it to fit and not fall off. Um, and I know that these PVC pieces fit in about a half inch. So I have cut a nine inch piece and another nine inch piece right here. And then that gives me right here an extra inch, half inch, half inch, half inch, half inch. Okay. Um, and I know it just with the bend there, it gives me a little extra buffer in terms of that puts me at 20 inches and there's probably about another inch or so just on the corners. So that puts me right at 22. So nine and nine right here. So you're going to need four of those pieces. One, two, three, four. Okay. Then over here, I cut, this is 14 inches here, 
on this piece and then this one here is seven now you can adjust this and the reason that I, I, I set this back is so I have more of a workplace. I'll show you where I put the foam board down. I can get more of a display here when I go to cut. So we got two 14s, two 7s, four 9-inch pieces. And then this piece here in the middle, obviously, is going to fit all the way across the whole length as you go through there. Now, scaling upwards, I cut two 15 inch pieces this is a 15 and a 15 and then we got our t-bracket obviously and then I cut a six inch piece right here six inch and six inch and then as I cut this across this just goes all the way across to balance out the width here and the same thing so we need two of these pieces as we go that is the basic construction of the frame now what I've done is up here, if you've looked, I've done two different things. Um, this one here is I made these one inch pieces so that way it can slide and I can get the proper angle that I want when I'm filming or shooting um, my video. And so what I have here is a one inch T and then this here is a six inch PVC and I remember I did the fitting down to three quarter inch to fit that in. And then this is just an adjustable clamp that I found. So I clamped this on, I added then this little piece, and this allows me to put on the camera that I'm actually using to film this. And then this is all adjustable. So this is on a, a ball here. So I can loosen this up and then I can adjust my angle accordingly. Um, most times I just look straight down. So that's one piece. And then this is nice because I can put this right in the middle and center it when I'm using this one. And if I'm not using it, I can just slide it away. This one here is, I've done this uh, for my GoPro camera. Um, once again, using a one inch T PVC for the top and bottom. I kept this another one inch PVC piece right here um, for the frame. We just kind of connected all that together. And then this one is threaded. So um, I'm not gonna pull this out all the way. I got it in pretty good but this is a threaded end of this T piece so I've screwed that in and then I've just taken a um, a bolt and for my GoPro camera which you would normally mount on like a, a, a stick that you could take into the ocean or the water um, I've done that here I've just put the the piece into the PVC and locked it in that way and now I have my GoPro camera um, to be able to use if I'm doing stop motion or things like that I'm going to be adding another one of these. The same exact approach. I'll probably do this the same exact build here again. But I have another mount, which is right here, which allows me to add my cell phone. And so then I will have three different ways to capture video. And then the beauty of these is, especially with the clamp, I can adjust those um, the way I want and I can take them off. Because my next thing that I'm finding that I'm gonna need is I'm actually going to swap this particular piece out for it to T, but there's a piece that pops up so that I can mount a camera here to be nice and straightforward looking at my model builds. So once you have all that, we need to get the base done. And so what I did was I purchased some foam board at the hardware store. And this is one of the reasons why I chose to go 24 inches um, long is so the foam board fits perfectly on there. And so what I had to do, let me get this layered on here, is I just took a utility knife and I cut out a notch around this base. And when I did so, now I've got this nice white canvas that I can use and then what can happen from here is I have another piece of foam board that if I want a white backdrop I can just prop here accordingly for a quick little fix and now I've got a nice white backdrop when I'm shooting I have also even though I don't use it as much a 
I've done the same thing in black. So I bought black foam board in case I want a black backdrop. And so this is how I created the document station. I hope you found it helpful. If you're looking for the links to show notes in terms of all these attachments, I'll add those. And if you have any questions or ideas, um, always looking for feedback. And as I said, this is quite helpful to have when I'm documenting my own work and more importantly, something that I think every makerspace should have for kids to document their own learning along the way. All right, guys, stay awesome. Thank you.